fresh off a win in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And point guard Delvon Arrington leads the attack against Auburn today with help from running mate Ron Hale. Auburn has picked up where they left off last year with a senior-laden starting lineup that features point guard Doc Robinson and the incredible Chris Porter. We are in the house that Cliff built as Auburn welcomes Florida State on Fox Sports Next. Well, the house that Cliff built is the Beard East Memorial Coliseum, which has become lately one of the toughest places to play in all of college basketball. The Tigers haven't lost in here in a year and a half. And today, they play host to an ACC basketball team that will get a look at one Chris Porter. Some say the premier player in college basketball. He is a dynamite talent. And the Cliff Dwellers, they're on hand, and they're making some noise. It's ACC versus SEC, Florida State, and Auburn coming your way. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Neal, along with my partner, Dan Bonner. And, Dan, this Florida State basketball team certainly comes in here with some expectations, maybe not as lofty as Auburn after a 13-17 and 17 run a year ago, but they are coming off a big win on the road against Northwestern in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. So they probably have some confidence coming in here to play the seventh-ranked team in the country. They do. They're a team that has a lot of pretty good pieces, but they're nicked up a little bit. And in uh, Davis Anderson and Ron Hale, you're going to see one of the better forward combinations in the country. Well, they do have a tough test today in this Auburn Tiger basketball team, 3-1 and one on the season. We all hear about Chris Porter, the cover of magazines from coast to coast, but yet this team, as we have talked about, is basically run by their point guard, Doc Robinson. He must continue to lead the Tiger offense and defense. One of the things that you see throughout the country, the good teams get great guard play. That's what Doc Robinson, Auburn certainly gets at. Robinson, imperturbable, also very creative. He can create shots for himself, and more importantly for the point guard, he can create shots for his teammates, number six, all time at Auburn in assists. Yeah, and he can also score 26 career double figure game scoring games for Doc Robinson. Now, when you look at this Florida State basketball team, they certainly all have some very talented players. 75% of their offense is back from a year ago. Four of their five starters are back, although their lineup has changed somewhat. But still, Delvon Arrington, their point guard, must lead this team and must be able to control the tempo of this basketball game if Florida State's going to be successful. I, there's no question about that, David. Five feet 11, Arrington may be a little bit small as a point guard, but he's extremely quick. He's quick enough that he can beat pressure in the backcourt. He's strong enough that he can get the ball all the way to the goal. An important key for him is some good judgment and running the fast break. He's an emotional guy, but he's got to make sure he doesn't turn the ball over. Florida State's excited about this opportunity. An ACC team on the road against an SEC team. This is a big game for both schools, and it's a big game for Cliff Ellis. It's his 54th birthday, and if he wins this game, it'll be victory number 100 of his career here in Auburn University. State and Auburn tip off and lineups coming your way next. We all do dumb things. Hmm. Hmm. Paying too much for car insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Geico, a 15 minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We all do dumb things. Hmm. Paying too much for car insurance doesn't have to be one of them. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. If you want your car to pass this daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service, low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke. They'll keep you on the right track with quality brake service, shocks and struts, and of course, mufflers. All for that great Meineke price. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You guys ready to spread some holiday cheer at 56 k <laughs> Come on. When you order this Dell Dimension L433C desktop featuring an Intel Celeron processor at 433 MHz, you also get jukebox software, greeting card software, 
and an Intel PC camera, so you can make your own holiday greetings. Dell for me makes it easy. What kind of holiday music is that? Plus, this system includes everything you see here for just $14.99. And if you order by December 31st, you can get $400 back when you buy a Dell system and sign up for the Dellnet three-year internet service program. It's all part of Dell for me, a great way to get the things you want in one place. To order your Dell Dimension featuring an Intel Celeron processor and to get details on the Dellnet $400 mail-in rebate, visit our website or call today. Happy Holidays! <laughs> Direct. Dell. ACC Live. Monday nights at 7 on Fox Sports Net. We are back inside Beard Ease Memorial Coliseum on the campus of Auburn University. It's Florida State and Auburn coming your way in a matter of moments. Auburn 3 and 1 on the year. Florida State comes in at 3 and 2. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for Florida State. Some changes in there. Delvon Arrington, of course, not a change. He will run the show. Adrian Crawford gets the start. He's been a little bit banged up this season. In the, uh, Damius Anderson is one of the forwards. At number 50, a big man in the middle, a transfer from BYU, the seven footer David Anderson. For Auburn, it's Robinson, Pullman, Porter, McGadney, and Jai, those five have been pretty much the uh, starting five throughout the season for the Auburn Tigers. Steve Robinson in his third year as the head coach of the Florida State Seminoles. Last year's team, uh, four games under 500. And Cliff Ellis, whose 54th birthday is today, of course, one win shy of picking up number 100 while the head coach of the Auburn Tigers. And Dan, the key matchup, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, obviously, the two point guards have to be uh, in charge today. Absolutely. You've got to be able to control the ball. You need to have guys to get it where you need to have it on the offensive end. Delvon Arrington, interestingly enough, at 5 feet 11, is the number two rebounder for Florida State. And we mentioned Doc Robinson can not only put some points on the board, he rebounds it pretty well, and 7.3 assists a game is a pretty impressive number. It'll be a good matchup. Number 10 and number 50. Florida State wearing their garnet uniforms. The Auburn Tigers in the all-white. Our officials, Don Clockerty, Daryl Boudreaux, and we are Mike Wood as well. Also, we are underway. Florida State starts in the man-to-man -man defense. Robinson down low to Porter. That's a good matchup. Porter against Damus Anderson. His ball away, no good. Injai with a big board. David Anderson tries to keep him out of the post. Can't do so. Injai with another offensive rebound. Misses again. Porter's follow. Three offensive boards for the Auburn Tigers before they're whistled for the foul. And that foul is going to be called against Njai, and that's really a problem for Cliff Ellis and his troops. If Njai gets in foul trouble, they really don't have any other big guys. David Hamilton is a player that... Uh, due to some academic problems. He's having to sit out until their next game. He's missed the first part of this season. Oh, what a play by Robinson. Well, I thought he had that ball. Robinson got up high, couldn't corral it. Auburn out of the pressure, drops back into the man-to-man. Gives it up to Arrington. Goes baseline. Damius Anderson. Damius Anderson puts it home. Nice play. Good patience from Florida State. And we might mention that Ron Hale only played eight minutes in the game against Northwestern due to a knee problem. And he's seated over on the bench now with a towel, a hot pack on that knee. Porter is fouled. The other injury the, on that Florida State lineup, of course, is Oliver Simmons, who got cracked in the lip. There is Ron Hale. Ron also broke his nose, having a tough go at it. He had an MRI on Thursday back in Tallahassee. They found no significant damage to his knee. They, they're calling it a bruised ligament. So it's uh, basically a situation where if he feels good, if there's no swelling, he will play until he deems that uh, maybe that knee hurts or he's too tired. And as you mentioned, the broken nose, so he's had the high and low of it, and it hadn't been very good. <laughs> Although he has really played well this year in an otherwise forgettable performance by his team against Florida. He had 24 points. He had 21 points and 11 rebounds against Jacksonville. Florida State really needs to have him in the game. He's gone over 23 times already this year. Loose basketball, the Florida missed free throw. Florida State has it. Auburn noted for its rebounding, and Dave, they've really been all over the offensive boards early. Unfortunately for the Tigers, they don't have any buckets to show for it. Only one point, that coming off the free throw. That off the hands of Adrian Crawford, the 6'5 junior at Akron, Ohio, transferred over to Florida State from Tulsa, where he played with Steve Robinson. 
of course, Adrian's dad is Coleman Crawford, who's Steve Robinson's number one assistant at Florida. That helps, doesn't it? <laughs> and Jai at the elbow. His 15-footer off the iron. Auburn, of course, comes in shooting the ball very poorly, under 35%. And one of the reasons why you shoot it poorly is sometimes your shot selection. I don't know that that's particularly the shot that Cook Ellis wanted. Dixon battling for it with Inchai. It's off Dixon. It'll be Florida State or Auburn basketball. You mentioned rebounding, and that is uh, where Auburn excelled a year ago. They were plus nine in that department, second best in the country. And they're a little disappointed right now, Dan. They're only plus eight. They're only plus eight, but again, without Hamilton, they've been playing a relatively small lineup, and one of the teams that they've played is Stanford that rebounds just about as well as anybody. Yeah, you don't want to play the Cardinal with a small lineup, that is for sure. is where he excels, but he mishandled the ball there, and that's one thing with Delvon Arrington. He really is very, very good at pushing the ball up the court. Sometimes he doesn't make good decisions, and that time he just got a little fast, got a little ahead of himself and double dribbled it, although neither he nor his coach agree with that call. Well, after that horrible performance where they turned the ball over 29 times against Florida, they are averaging 11.4 turnovers in the last four games. Doc Robinson slices through the lane for the bucket. Arrington was talking to the referee as Robinson was dribbling the ball up, and I think his discussion complaining about that double dribble call cost him that basket. He's got to be careful. He doesn't pick up his second foul, 30 feet from the basket. Nice right-handed layup off the glass for Arrington. I think Arrington feels as if he has got an advantage in quickness over Pullman out there on the perimeter. He just went right by him. Porter skies and hangs. Nice defense. With the, he's, he's relentless going after the ball. One of the things that Delvon Arrington can do is get by you out on the perimeter and get all the way to the basket. Just too quick out there. Nobody comes over to help. gives it back to Auburn. Now, Florida State has turned the ball over a couple of times early, Dave, and the difficulty for Auburn is they'd like to make those turnovers transition turnovers. Thus far, they've just taken the ball out of bounds. Florida State's been able to set its defense. More turnovers for the Knowles. Man-to-man -man defense. Inchai with another offensive board. Anderson blocks it. That's 16 blocks on the season for Anderson in limited minutes. Anderson is a very capable shot blocker. Auburn would like to get a transition game going to force guys like Anderson to have to run up and down the court, but if Cliff Ellis's guys are going to be playing in a half-court game, Anderson's going to be a factor with his shot blocking. He's not very mobile, but he can block shots. He got into some foul trouble against Northwest and didn't play, but about 15 minutes before he fouled out. Oliver Simmons checks on for the Seminoles, Justin Mott as well. And you see Cliff Ellis goes to his bench to try to get a little more quickness against Delvon Arrington. Reggie Sharp, the 6'3 junior. And an illegal screen. I think that's, they got McGadney. Mac McGadney. Or excuse me, Justin oh, Mott picks up that foul. Steve Robinson happy, his team hanging in there. They lead by one. A little bit sloppy in the opening moments. Back in a moment. If you want your car to pass its daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service, low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke, like a nationwide warranty on the Meineke muffler that's right for you. 
When it comes to customer satisfaction, come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Bud Light, please. There you go. Hey, aren't you, uh... Yeah, yeah, I am. Hey, everybody! It's Faith Hill's husband. She is so amazing. I would love to meet her. Man, she's... Yeah, you and her, huh? <laughs> How's that working out? Bud Light is proud to sponsor Faith Hill's husband. Well, you know, I sing a little, too. Oh, bless your heart. Did you know Altel is simplifying telecommunications? What you want to go and do that for? Well, it makes things easier for our customers. You see, with Altel, you can get all your different telecommunication services from one company. When I was growing up, we didn't have any of that stuff. If you want to get through to somebody, you just hit him with a stick. Well, sir, we can't have people going around hitting it. Ow. Works, don't it? <laughs> Trail by one, opening moments of the first half. Last year was a sensational season for the Tigers. 29 and 4, an SEC championship. We talked to Cliff Ellis about that season. I'm very proud of my team. I'm very proud of what, uh, what this team has done. And we've got four seniors on this team that have been the cornerstone to providing Auburn something that has never been provided to them before. I mean, you, 29 wins, the rankings. There has only been one other SEC regular season champion. Uh, this team will be etched in the memory of Auburn people forever and ever. Uh, this group, this group of seniors that are, that, are, that are here this year, they'll be able to walk back 30 years from now with their grandchildren and say, I was a part of that. And that is a great thing uh, to be a part of. David, he's sure right about that. It is. It's awfully fun when you're there when it gets started. And not that they haven't had it at Auburn before, but not for a while. The excitement in this building every night was amazing. And there's, there's another turnover. Sloppy basketball at the start of the game, but what you're dealing with is two teams who really get after one another on defense. So the sloppiness isn't really all that big a surprise. Five turnovers for Florida State, two turnovers for Auburn. Make it six for Florida State. Arrington tries to split the double team with the dribble, push the bar a little ball a little too far out in front of him. The Auburn Tigers just one of nine from the floor, Dan. And they've had, they've had some good looks at it. in the zone now going to try to make Auburn shoot over the top and Auburn shooting only 26% from three-point range. Back again, he misses the jump shot. Fish back on the floor. Calls a timeout. Along with Arrington, timeout taken by Steve Robinson and his troops. 14-59. We will step aside for a moment. The Noles still lead it by one. I'm looking for a telecommunications company with real power. Well, sir, Altel has over 7 million customers in 24 states. Great Scott, man, 7 million? You can't maintain that kind of pace. Well, it's no problem, sir. In fact, now people can bundle different services and save money. But you're pushing it too hard. It's really okay, no, sir. No, you don't understand. The reactors can't keep up. Sooner or later, they're going to blow. Reactors? <laughs> Our owners don't drive to work, they walk. Gold Kiss Farms Chicken, tastes fresh from the farm, because it is. Farmer owned Gold Kiss Farms Chicken, tastes fresh from the farm, because it is. The Maglite flashlight, brighter, tougher, Made in America. Maglite, the perfect gift to brighten the holidays. Maglite. Winter got you down? Watch Fox Sports News Primetime for your chance to get away as eSports.com presents the Winter Break Sweepstakes. Log on to FoxSports.com for more details on how you can win a VIP trip to Hollywood. Watch Fox Sports News Primetime at 10 p.m. as eSports.com presents the Winter Break Sweepstakes. Scores, highlights, reaction. Primetime covers the NFL tonight. 
Well, the first five minutes and one second hadn't exactly been pretty basketball, but Florida State leads it by one, four to three. We've got some more basketball coming your way. Certainly should be an outstanding matchup on Wednesday night in Athens, Georgia. Dan and I will be there as we witness uh, Georgia Tech and Georgia doing batting. I'm just trying to figure a nice way to put this after that football game, Dan, uh, where Georgia fumbled the football in the one and well, there was, you know, some talk about that, whether it was a fumble or it wasn't a fumble. A little bit of talk. That just that just adds a little spice to the rivalry. These teams don't like one another anyway. That'll be at 7.30 right here on Fox Sports Net from Athens, Georgia. The Jackets and the Dogs. Long throw out. Boy, and Hale almost picked that one off. Pullman, his three. Ooh, I think boy. Arrington might have got a piece of that. Pullman's claiming Arrington got a piece of his arm. <laughs> Race. Auburn stays in the man-to-man -man defense, and Arrington has been able to get by Pullman out on the perimeter. That time, however, Pullman gets the turn of a nice play. Pullman leads the charge. Sharp goes tough. Hale skies, blocks the shot. It's off Menchai. It'll be Florida State basketball. An example of Ron Hale playing both ends of the floor. He can really run. There's Adrian Crawford, another one of those guys who was a little nicked up. He had knee surgery just before the start of the season, and he's only now rounding back into playing shape. And see, this is a difficult time for Florida State. Arrington's out of the game. And there's a 10-second violation. They just don't go quickly enough. Adrian Crawford, not a natural point guard, what they now in this day and age call a combo guard, some guy who plays mostly the shooting guard but can play the point. I don't know that that's going to get it done against Auburn. Eight turnovers for Florida State. But on the upside for Florida State, they're ahead by a point. Gagne, pump fakes, gives it to Fishback, three seconds in the lane. And Njai is talking to himself as he walks up the court. He got in position for the rebound because he was sure Fishback was going to shoot the ball. When you get it in that close, you've got to shoot it. Fish back with that side to free throw line. Ron Hale in the game now playing the shooting guard spot. What do you think about him at the two versus the three? I much prefer him at the three. I just think that he is his quickness and his ability to run the court making a really, really good three. Average two, but a very, very good three. Fish back with the rebound, hands it over to Sharp. Hard to believe these two teams have only scored seven points. But Gagne way off the mark. He wanted the foul. Well, if you're the official, you can't bail out a guy who's making a bad play, and so I think that's a pretty good no call right there. Auburn just doesn't seem to have any rhythm on the offensive end. Florida State doing a nice job getting back on defense, doing a nice job changing defenses. Swiped by Sharp, but Hale comes back and picks it up. There's seven on the shot clock. Hale down low off the hands of Oliver Simmons. Good look from Hale. That was really a good play by Sharp. He almost came up with the first transition turnover of the game. That is a turnover you create in you used to create a transition basket down on the other end, and there's another foul on Adrian Crawford. Florida State really struggling with the turnovers. This is an excellent pass in size, and it hits Simmons right in the hands. Chris Porter back onto the floor. Also on the floor, Doc Robinson. Njai will take a seat. And with Njai out of the game, Auburn suddenly gets very small. Arrington on the floor for Florida State as well. State staying in that zone. Heard. His three is good. And Auburn's got enough guys, Heard in particular, who can really shoot the three, but you simply can't give them those open shots. That 26% isn't going to stay that way very long. These guys just shoot the ball too well. Heard a 33% three-point shooter. It's his fourth of the season. Dick 
Harrington, way up top. Harrington loses the basketball. And what Florida and what Auburn is doing on defense is playing a triangle in two. Dixon hangs in the air, can't get it, gets the rebound, hangs in the air again, and a nice touch off the iron. Dixon is a very, very good leaper. He's a very aggressive player, already has a couple of double-figure games this year, and against one of those trick defenses, it's tough to block out sometimes, and Dixon takes advantage. Robinson slices in. He's fouled. Lots of times, Dave, when you're not getting it done from the perimeter, when you're struggling on offense, a good way to get yourself straightened out is to take the ball and go to the basket. That puts pressure on the defense. You're likely to draw some fouls. If you're not going to draw fouls, then guys are going to open up inside. If for nothing else, offensive rebounds. So that's a real smart play by Doc Robinson. Doc Averson, free throw shooter. Floor. 11.27 to go, and believe it or not, Florida State has only attempted five field goals. We played nine and a half minutes, and they only had five field goal attempts. On the other hand, Auburn, they put it up 14 times. But we've seen a little offense here in the last couple of minutes. Jay Hurd nails the three, the first of the game. That gave Auburn the lead. Antoine Dixon shows his athletic ability hanging in the air. If you want your car to pass this daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service, low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke. They'll keep you on the right track with quality brake service, shocks and struts, and of course, mufflers. All for that great Meineke price. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot but you'll get a lot. Our owners don't drive to work. They walk. Gold Kiss Farms Chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm. Because it is. Farmer owned Gold Kiss Farms Chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm, because it is. on a Z3 Roadster. Well, we couldn't get these two heavyweights on the football field, but we got them on the basketball floor as Florida State trails Auburn by two. And speaking of heavyweights, Sunday night fights come your way. Later on tonight, it's heavyweights Wolf Graham and Calvin Lampkin. They duke it out at 7 o'clock Eastern on Fox Sports Net. Sunday night fights right here on Fox Sports Net. There is a... Uh, a nice counter puncher and Chris Porter. He could turn a game around in a matter of moments with his athletic ability. Well, this game has all, has had all the fluidity of a fight that uh, <laughs> nobody accomplishes very much right at the moment. Only eight to six on the offensive end. Both teams doing a pretty good job defensively, however. Arrington misses. Fish back the rebound. And I guess you were talking about a Jerry Cooney type of fight. Robinson. His three is good. That's really the first transition basket for Auburn. You like to get down there and get a chance before the defense gets set. Fish back, missed. And sharp miss. Good heavens. When you steal it like that, you'd like to convert it into a basket. The plus side is you stole the ball and you got an offensive rebound, but the downside is you still haven't scored. There's the steal. Porter wow. ahead. It's a two-on-one. Sharp. Alley oops. Porter misses the jam. And a foul going to be called against Auburn. That was a pretty good defensive play by Florida State. 
sharp signal that he was going to throw that alley-oop out about half court, and that's Delvon Arrington who gets himself close enough to Porter to disrupt that shot. That is a very, very fine defensive play. Only 5 feet 11 is Arrington. Still so there's another turnover. Heard. And the bullet missed it again. Auburn is having a nightmare from the floor. They are now 3 of 19 shooting. That makes it really tough on the defense. Florida State just keeps hanging around. They're three of six from the floor. Stolen away. Herb lays it up and in and nearly missed it. <laughs> he very nearly missed that one. Steve Robinson has seen enough. His team has only attempted six shots, and they've turned it over 13 times. And we're not even halfway through the first stanza of this game. As soon as Auburn went to that full court pressure, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they made some field goals to be able to get into that defensive alignment. And the defense really has changed the tempo of this game. Auburn showing great quickness with their hands. They're just stepping in front of the pass. Not a good play by the Florida State Seminoles. You've got to step toward the pass. That time, Auburn able to convert, but they've stolen two inbounds passes and missed the layup, so they really could have a much bigger lead. Auburn with seven steals. They average 7.8 per game. And there's still 30 minutes of basketball left. Fish back all over the inbounds pass. There's a double team in the well, now they're trapped in the corner. Well, Rodney Tucker, the freshman for Florida State, was in, and he's the guy who threw it away twice. Tucker out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. He's going to be a pretty good player, but that's a tough spot for the freshman. Crawford. Touch. Adrian Crawford can shoot the basketball, and he's a big, strong kid. A lot of coaches, opposing coaches, feel like to properly play Crawford, you've got to make him run up and down the court. You can't let him get set for that shot. Hurt on Anderson. Blocked by Anderson. Here's Doc Robinson. Fishback dives for it, but couldn't hold on to it and keep it in bounds. Turnover by Auburn. When you see Doc Robinson penetrate to the basket, you better move yourself to get in position to make a play. Fishback stands and watches, and if you're going to stand and watch, you ought to buy a ticket. Fishback needs to get down on the wing there where it's an easy pass. That's an awfully tough pass to throw it behind like that. Mamadou and John checks in for Fishback. Porter on the floor with Coleman, Hurd, Robinson, and Injai. Thirteen Seminole turnovers to Auburn's four. The Coleman now matched up against Adrian Crawford. Let's see if Florida State tries to utilize that mismatch and take him inside. Foul inside. Looks like Injai will pick that up on a hold on David Anderson. Auburn foul is on number 34. That'll be his second on Injai. Jay Hurts steps aside. Auburn bench. Here comes back McGaddy, the 6'7 sophomore out of Mobile. So Cliff Ellis has his starting lineup back in, and they just lose Oliver Simmons on the inside. I don't know that Oliver Simmons will have an easier basket today. He stuffs it home. Oliver got whacked across the lip. Did not play against Northwestern. Enjai with an explosive move. Boy, that is a good, quick move by Enjai, and if he's going to do that, David Anderson just doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with him. Somebody's got to step in front, make him pass the ball, or try to draw the charge. What a nice play, boy. Big lineup for Florida State. Does that give the Seminoles any advantage with the, with the Auburn quickness? Florida State's lineup is, with the exception of Anderson, David Anderson, they've got some pretty good quickness as well. Baseline pulls up. Nice touch. Boy, it's tough to stop that shot. And there's an example of what I'm talking about. Ron Hale is playing the two guard, and he's quick enough to get it down to the baseline. And even though Doc Robinson cuts him off, Hale is six feet nine, and he just rises up over Robinson and sticks it in the basket. Holman's three in and out. Rebound to David Anderson. Crawford pushes. Crawford, of course, as you mentioned, coming off surgery on October 12th, had his knee scoped, played limit, uh, limited time, but uh, had a season-high 31 minutes against Northwestern. And 
they say he's back uh, as close to 100 percent as he'll be this season did you see him try to run the ball up the court as he ran by his coach robinson told him to stop <laughs> Robinson two on one. He takes it the distance. The finger roll up and in. Not a bad play by Adrian Crawford to try to cover up Chris Porter. You figure he's going to make the pass to Porter, but with Robinson, you can never be sure. Nice play. Crawford pushing it. Simmons. Nice bounce pass to David Anderson. Had Anderson been ready to shoot when he caught that ball, he would have had an easy opportunity. But Auburn defense did a nice job closing it down. Hale off the mark, way off the mark. Here comes Coleman. He'll slow it down or not. Chris Porter is fouled as he drives to the basket, misses the shot with 6.52 to go in the first half. Looks like they're finally putting their fast break together. Pullman makes a really nice play here, just pulling the ball back out, giving Porter a chance to catch up, and Ron Hale tries to step in and isn't able to. Porter very, very aggressive, both on the offensive end and the defensive end, always looking for the ball. His intensity is really something to behold. People talk about his athletic skill, and it is certainly there, but great intensity by Chris Porter. Porter had a double-double against Belmont in the last outing. Second double-double of the season. Had 12 points, 12 rebounds. And you see each coach really going to his bench here in the first half. See Steve Robinson over there. He's taking his coat off. He's serious now. <laughs> no, he's keep on. I think he wanted to use the sleeves to wrap it around some guy's necks over there with all the turnovers. Well, the Seminoles have 13 turnovers. One of the reasons they trail by seven. Back to Auburn in a moment. What I was trying to do here was capture the hopelessness of modern life. It's permanent, but yet expansive. It's the same here as it is here. In fact, it's me. You ran out of paint and the art store wouldn't take a check again, right? Right. Consider the Bank of America check card instead of checks or cash. It's fast, easy, and accepted everywhere Visa is, so you can get what you need. What I was trying to do here get on with life. was capture the... Make all your shopping easier with the Bank of America check card. Getting legendary capability doesn't mean spending everything you have. In fact, lease a two-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee Sport for $2.99 a month with zero down and $2.99 due at signing, and you may even have a little change left over. Now get all this at no extra charge. Jeep, official vehicles of the Carolina Panthers. This is Fox Sports Net. Seventh-ranked Tigers lead the Seminoles 19-12. 6.52 to go in the first half. From Beard Ease Memorial Coliseum, Dave Neal along with Dan Bonner. Glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon of college basketball on Fox Sports Net. And there is Ron Hale. Not the kind of season he was hoping to have in terms of his health. They, you know, big things. Third-team All-ACC last year. Some thought he's All-American material this year. Bad knee, broken nose. But he's still having a pretty good season. And here, Nigel Dixon is in the game for Florida State. The Florida State media information calls Dixon the largest man to ever play in the ACC. And they, I'll bet you they're right. I haven't seen everybody, but I'd be surprised if anybody's bigger than Nigel Dixon. Number 34, hard to miss him on the low post. Chris Porter has the task of trying to stop him. Dixon turns and an offensive foul. Now, you want to know why Chris Porter is such a valuable basketball player? He is going to stand there. This guy is listed at 350 pounds, and Porter just takes that hit and bounces right back up. He's every bit 350 and more, but Porter, that's what you call some outstanding defensive effort. 
taking one for the team. Coach Ellis says that exact thing. He, that Chris Porter doesn't get enough attention for his defensive skills. Sharp baseline decided that Nigel Dixon was there and not enough room for the both of them. Florida State in the zone, and Hale with those long arms at the top of the zone gets the turnover. Hale. Oh, what a play! Six foot nine, Ron Hale with a great steal and then takes it the distance to cap off a remarkable play. Now this is a guy who's got a bad knee, but those long arms, remember he's 6'9", and he is gonna take this ball to the basket, no thought about his health, and he lands on that bad knee. What an outstanding play. Gets up limping, but this is one tough guy. That was a big time finger roll. Perfect from the line, Ron Hale. And he's going to come out of the game as he went in and fell down. The whole Florida State bench came up. They are very, very concerned about his health. He waved it off and said he's going to stay in the game. Well, now Adrian Crawford goes up to that one of those two top spots on the zone. Florida State suddenly gets a little bit bigger along the back line, and Hale gets it on the back line. Doesn't matter where he is out there. Ron Hale trying to keep his team close. They trail by four. Hale takes it in, hangs in the air. Off the iron, Coleman with a rebound. Little bit of an ill-advised shot right there. Ron Hale obviously feeling it, but not a good shot. Coleman, he's off the mark. Dixon with a rebound. Boy, Porter gets his hands on about everything. Oh, my! Hale off the back of the iron. They call a blocking foul on Coleman. Perhaps Coleman was too far underneath the iron. To gain a charge in this situation, you have to be in position and you have to be stopped. Both feet on the floor facing the dribble, dribbler before the guy leaves the floor and he was not in position. You can establish that position and then once you establish it, you can move side to side to maintain the position, but he never got himself stopped at all. Gutsy move by Pullman. Hale at full speed. One of the things that impresses me about this Auburn team, I know they're struggling with shooting the ball in this half, but they really do play very hard. That's typical of a Cliff Ellis team, and nobody out there is afraid to give himself up for a defensive play. Coleman didn't get that one, but it was a good attempt. Ron Hale makes both 19-17 now, those trail by two, but boy, Ron Hale is a guy you have to have on the floor. Florida State, with as much as they've turned the ball over, they're back within two points. The Tigers struggle on offense. Really a problem at the moment. Pullman, baseline. Got that shot. And that's that's got to be a confidence booster for Scott Pullman. Nice job moving without the basketball. Pullman's first made field goal. He's one of four today. Another turnover. Robinson kicks it out. Hurt, knocks down the jumper, that's a two. Game becomes pretty easy when the ball goes in the goal. Excellent transition basketball. Florida State beats the pressure. Auburn back to the man-to-man. -man. Boy, Hurt has some really quick hands. And you talk about turning your defense into offense. Doc Robinson off the turnover. Nice job. Remember we said when he gets down in there, get yourself in a position where you can do some damage. Well, Hurd did. Dropped down to the wing. A much easier pass for Robinson, and it results in a basket. Hurd has seven in the game. He came in averaging a little over five. There's three on the shot clock. Arrington, high arching shot, way off the mark. Chris Porter with the rebound. And Robinson wants to push it up. Hurt misses that one. Hale the rebound. Dave, he really never controlled that ball before he shot it. Fumbled it. And whenever you do that and you're trying to line up the three, the best thing to do is just to hang on to the ball and get the offense going rather than try to recover quickly and squeeze that three. Harrington down the pass. Hale loses it, but it's fouled. And he'll step to the free throw line. Hurt reached in. Looks like Auburn has stayed in that triangle and two. The Auburn foul is on number 12, Jay Hurd. Fishback and Porter and Robinson.
Johnson playing a little zone, Hurd and Pullman playing man-to-man, -man. and have a tendency every once in a while, unless you really communicate effectively, to lose guys on the inside, and that time they lost Ron Hale, and he's the last guy you want to lose. He's having a heck of a first half. Four of four from the line, two of four from the floor, a total of eight points. Coming up at halftime, we'll have some highlights. Look at the game stats, which uh, might be a little ugly. And everybody's All-American, Chris Porter. That's coming your way in a matter of moments. We've got 345 to go in the first half from Auburn. The Knowles hanging in with the seventh-ranked team in the country. For nearly 50 years, the Atlantic Coast Conference has excelled both on and off the field. Our corporate partners have helped sustain this tradition of excellence through their financial support of our student-athletes and a variety of community outreach programs. We're proud that our corporate partners have joined with the Atlantic Coast Conference in this important effort. You know, with Alltel, you can combine multiple telecommunication services on one bill and save up to 15%. I'm sorry, what did you say? I was just saying, with Alltel, you can combine multiple services and save money. Uh, I can't understand you. I'm a dentist. Uh, oh, you're a dentist. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Alltel saves me money. Yes, sir. Sorry. The Atlantic Coast Conference. A tradition since 1953. And Fox Sports Net has it covered from the first snap to the final buzzer on ACC Live. Get the most comprehensive coverage of ACC football and basketball anywhere with highlights from around the league and in-depth analysis. From the courts to the fields, ACC Live has it all. ACC Live, Mondays at 7 on Fox Sports Net. <laughs> Auburn 23, Florida State 19, 3.45 to go in the opening 20 minutes from Auburn, Alabama. More college basketball coming your way tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern on Fox Sports Net. Campbell takes on Sanford, and if Sanford Bulldogs play like they did the other night against Alabama in a game I had, watch out. These guys might not lose another basketball game. They won 24 a year ago. They play the game the way it's supposed to be played. That's Campbell and Sanford tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern. Florida State out of the zone now, into the man-to-man -man after that timeout, trying to put some pressure on the ball. Hurt off the mark. Hale with another rebound. Two on one. Hale. That's what a nice play by Doc Robinson, and he is going to be fouled by Arrington. But that was really a nice job in transition defense. Doc Robinson getting back, playing in the passing lane. Robinson does not elect to try to stop Hale. He plays in between Hale and Arrington, and Arrington pulls him down from behind. But that's really the way you want to play that in the two-on-one situation. Don't commit to that dribbler too early and allow the easy pass. Get in the passing lane. Nice job. Robinson to the free throw line. Robinson... Nine points, make that ten. Go along with three assists. He's had a solid first half. Okay, two. Makes them both. Six-point game. The pressure from Auburn. A little bit different. They're not guarding the ball out of bounds. More a three-quarter court look, and now they drop back. Garden, Adrian Crawford and Ron Hale, man to man. Harrington goes down. Simmons, nice bounce pass underneath. Florida State can't convert the shot, but who's there? Ron Hale, he can't convert. Fish back to rebound. Real good play by her, getting down, rotating, forcing a difficult shot. Pullman pump fakes Hale. That's what you want to do with Pullman. You want to you don't want to make him put the ball on the deck and try to shoot off the dribble. You don't want to let him stand there and pull the trigger. Pullman had a huge night against Stanford, 21 points in that Auburn loss. A wooden classic out west. Came off the bench and scored 21. Stolen away. Here come the Tigers. Three on two. Pullman. 
A little bit too fancy there by Doc Robinson. If you throw a pass like that, you ought to throw it the other way because Chris Porter's over there. But Porter really doing a good job. It looks like it's open inside, but Porter gets the ball. Did you see the way he tapped it behind his back to Robinson? The only mistake on that play is Robinson threw it the wrong direction. Back, McGadney on the floor. Here comes Reggie Sharp. Doc Robinson will take a seat. If you're going to throw it to Pullman, you obviously have the element of surprise, but sometimes you don't need the element of surprise. Just throw it over there to Porter. Yeah, you don't need the surprise of Porter's over there, running the lane. two-minute mark. Long three from Crawford. What about that range? Auburn appeared to drop into his own defense that time. A lot of communication out there, but Adrian Crawford has very deep range. You've got to get out on him. He's another guy. You have to make him dribble the ball. That pulls the Seminoles to within three. Porter, his baseline 15-footer is perfect. As well as he can play on the inside, if he's going to start making those shots, it'll actually be unfair. That's what he did all summer, was come to the gym and shoot jump shots. Anderson, his three is good. You give Damus Anderson that much time, and he is going to drill the three. This is a young man that only made two three-point baskets in his career and now has seven this season. Seven of 17 from behind the arc is Anderson. Sharp. His three is good. Now, you explain this to me. We, we went through a stretch where nobody could score, and now nobody could miss. We'll take it. Under a minute to go. Crawford pulls it back to Arrington. Five-point Auburn lead. <laughs> An offensive explosion. Go figure. And Antoine Dixon is sitting over there at the scorer's table. He's trying to get in for the last couple of minutes, but he hadn't been able to because we've been running up and down scoring. My goodness. Pullman pump fakes, takes it inside, hangs in the air. He makes a shot. As time runs out in the first half. Well, for 18 minutes, it might have been the ugliest game played for either one of these teams all season long. But then something happened. They turned on the air or something because everybody got hot. Guys suddenly getting comfortable. And again, once the ball starts going in the goal, it's a contagious thing. Florida State is going to come down and answer. Delvon Arrington, who struggled in the first half. And now here's Pullman. We said make him dribble the ball. Okay, so he dribbles the ball in. A fadeaway jump shot. An appropriate way for that last couple of minutes of the half to come to a close. Seminoles trail by four. Back in a moment. Even with its impressive power and remarkable handling, a two-wheel drive Grand Cherokee Laredo can still be leased for zero down, $339 a month, and just $339 due at signing. Maybe that's why everyone's going out of their way to get a look at it. Jeep, official vehicles of the Carolina Panthers. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Hollenberg, host of the Daily Sports Source, your home for the best in sports collectibles and information, seen every Monday through Friday right here on Fox Sports South. In honor of the SEC championship game this weekend, we're bringing you some NCAA SEC merchandise. The Peyton Manning University of Tennessee autographed mini helmet, two payments, $94.50. We've also got the Peyton Manning autographed 8x10 photo, one payment, $75. How about Tim Couch from the University of Kentucky? We've got an autographed Couch UK mini helmet for two payments of $71, and the autographed Tim Couch 8x10 action photo for $53. All you have to do is call 1-877-451-SPORT 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and make sure to tune in to me, Rich Hollenberg, and the rest of the Daily Sports Source crew every Monday through Friday right here 
on Fox Sports South. ACC Live, Monday nights at 7 on Fox Sports Net. We are back at halftime where the last two minutes of this game turned out to be uh, some of the more exciting basketball we've had this year. But the first 18 minutes, somewhat ugly. Nonetheless, it's 32 to 28. Dan, we talked about it at the beginning of this game that both point guards had to, to lead their teams to the promised land. Doc Robinson didn't disappoint. And Delvon Arrington stepped up his play down the stretch. He has five points, but no rebounds for Delvon Arrington. And unfortunately, seven turnovers for Arrington. And that is not a good stat for Doc Robinson, the 11 point points and three assists. Robinson, I think, is the guy who really got the Auburn offense on track. He did a nice job distributing the ball to his teammates. Couple of transition situations. He draws the zone defense, and then Hurd is able to knock it down. Hurd coming off the bench, scoring a couple. And then Doc Robinson, nice play to score the long three-point basket. So he's assisted, and he has scored himself those 11 points, I think, really important for the Auburn Tigers. Doc Robinson, 3 of 4 from the field, 4 of 4 from the line. We will come back, have more of our halftime activities in a moment. Stay with us. Our owners don't drive to work. They walk. Gold Kiss Farms Chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm. Because it is. Farmer-owned Gold Kissed Farms chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm, because it is. If you want your car to pass its daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service, low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke. They'll keep you on the right track with quality brake service, shocks and struts, and of course, mufflers, all for that great Monarchy price. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You talk, we listen. You ask, we do. You request, we provide. Because nobody knows your hair better than you do. Which is precisely why, at the Great Clips Advanced Training Centers, our stylists learn more than the latest styles. They learn how to listen. So no matter which Great Clips you visit, you'll get your hair cut the right way, your way, every time. Great Clips. Guaranteed satisfaction. Guaranteed style. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna jump! I'm Come on now, Phil. Let's talk about this. No, I'm really serious. I'm gonna do it this time. Look at me, Phil. Right here, right here. You and me. Let's just talk this out. You have friends in here that love you. Hey! This guy's got a fridge full of Bud Light! Phil, we've made a lot of progress. Gotta go. What? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You got a plunger? Oh, man! We are back inside Beard East Memorial Coliseum. The Auburn Tigers, ranked seventh in the country, lead the Florida State Seminoles in SEC SEC matchup. And certainly when people talk about this Auburn basketball program, Dan, one of the things they always point to is Chris Porter. Why not? He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Some say he's the preeminent and favorite for the college player of the year. Your thoughts on Chris Porter and, and, and the kind of recognition he's gotten from coast to coast, is it justified? I don't think there's any question that it's justified. The thing that impresses me about Chris Porter is the intensity with which he approaches everything. He really plays hard, and when one of your best players also is the guy who plays the hardest, that just inspires everybody else. Well, certainly he is one of the guys that uh, has garnered a lot of recognition since he transferred from Chipola Junior College here to Auburn University. Of course, he signed with Auburn out of high school, but he had to go to JC. Here he is, and you see some of the accolades that he has certainly picked up over the course of a season and a half. Preseason All-American, preseason favorite for the Wooden Award, the Naismith Award, and whatnot. What, in terms of what he means to this team athletically, we know that, but is he one of these guys that can lead a team down to a Final Four? 
I don't think there's any question that he's capable of that. The interesting thing, this kid came out of high school and people were questioned whether he could play or not. What about his attitude? Goes to junior college, comes to Auburn, pretty highly rated, but I don't think anybody expected this kind of thing. Now, it'll be interesting to see how he performs under the pressure of expectation. Yeah, there are plenty of expectations for this Auburn basketball team, for Cliff Ellis, and of course, Chris Porter. Earlier, we had a chance to talk to Coach Cliff Ellis about Chris Porter and what he means to this basketball team and to these basketball fans. He's hardworking. Uh, he is a tremendous athlete. He comes to play every day. Uh, when he makes a play, it excites everybody. And, it, and, it, and it's like a fever. It'll spread, and it makes, it, makes those things happen. Um, anytime you make a spectacular play in the game of basketball because it happens so quick, and it's not planned, it's unrehearsed, and you make that play, it brings the curtain down. He can bring the curtain down with his play. Had to do a game last year, Dan, in this building when Auburn played LSU, when he took off at the free throw line and hung in the air, grabbed it with his right hand, threw it home. One of the most amazing plays I've, I've seen all season long. But a guy like Chris Porter, though, can't do it alone. And I think you have other good athletes around him, and certainly his play brings their level of play up. And this team hasn't, to me, looked like that they're concerned about one guy getting all the attention. They all seem to be getting the ball. They all seem to be getting equal shots, and that's a tribute to Cliff Ellis. I think it's a tribute to Cliff Ellis, but to get back to Porter for a second, he's a guy who doesn't necessarily need to have his point. And I think that's the definition of a team player. You do whatever it is that you have to do to help your team win. Well, we've had plenty of chances to talk to Chris Porter over the past couple of months uh, leading up to this basketball season. We asked him a few things about playing here, and some of his answers that we got might surprise you a little bit. Ask Porter. Why? Why? I mean, just to think about the stadium being packed. I mean, the Coliseum is just whew, tremendous. It's just a tremendous emotion feeling in there. And just having them behind you, cheering you on. Or Eagle. <laughs> Well, you can certainly understand why he would be excited about that War Eagle chant. I had the opportunity to be at the University of Virginia back in the early 70s when they got it going there for the first time. And I can understand what Chris Porter's talking about. There's nothing more fun than your relationship with the fans when you really have it going, and they've really got it going here. Yeah, they do. Beard Ease Memorial Coliseum. This house has been a rocket since last year when they started off 25 and 1. Back in a moment. I hold in my hand proof that we are finally getting our financial act together. <laughs> this is our monthly statement from our new money manager account. It's a way to make uh, our investments and our bank account work together automatically to help us earn more. Really? How much more? I'm not telling. <laughs> She's so silly. Well, I, I tell you stuff. on a Z3 Roadster. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Deardorff. Where would you go for a home equity loan? Let's ask. Oh, banks have the best rates. But banks only lend money when you don't need it. Advanta National Bank is different. They lend money to people when they need it. Right. With my credit? They made their first loans 45 years ago to teachers who had trouble borrowing. They helped out when others wouldn't. This is a bank, right? With customers who get the flexibility only a national bank can offer, right over the phone. You gotta move all your accounts there. Nope, just call Advana. One of their loan specialists will show you how to use the equity in your home to pay off all of your bills. Get one low monthly payment and save hundreds of dollars a month, plus a tax deduction. You'll wait for some board to approve. You'll get fast approval over the phone. And your money in about 10 days. You don't need to have money in the bank to get money from a bank. To get the loan you want, call Advanta at 1-800-507-9840. You'll see they're different. Hey, they don't keep banker's hours either.
Catch Fox Sports Net Football News, weeknights at 6. Auburn leads Florida State 32-28. We are at halftime in a game that uh, features a lot of returning players from a year ago. Florida State brings back four or five players, starters from last year, 75% of their offense, 79% of their rebounding. A disappointing year record-wise for this Florida State team, but you've seen them a number of times already this season, Dan. Is this the kind of team that can maybe go 17-13 and 13 as opposed to the 13-17 and 17 a year ago? Oh, I think they have some talent. As you look at their record, they're 3-2, and two, but understand that they have played two teams ranked in the top 10, and now they're playing another team ranked in the top 10. So unless you have an outstanding team, you play all those folks ranked in the top 10, it's going to be really hard to build one of those 25-2 and two records. Well, this Auburn basketball team also returns plenty of talent. One of those guys happens to be Mamadou Inchai. But early on in this basketball game, Auburn could not buy a bucket. They started the game one of nine. Inchai with a couple of offensive rebounds. And as you can see, there's a lid on that thing. Both teams were missing field goals left and right. And then defense pretty much gave Auburn a lift in the first well, half. Auburn, Auburn was able to steal the ball, but a couple of times they weren't able to convert, so Florida State's turnovers denied them opportunities like this. When they didn't turn the ball over and Ron Hale was able to get it going, Auburn, or excuse me, Florida State played much better. And then at the end of the half, each team started trading baskets, so we had a defensive struggle early. Coleman hits the final shot of the half right there. Both teams really got it going. That 53% from the field for Florida State is deceptive because they only shot the ball 19 times. Auburn shot the ball 33 times. The 17 turnovers for Florida State, really an important statistic. That denied them the opportunity to get down and try to score. You know, 13 turnovers in the first seven minutes of this game. If they hold on, and that's 13 possessions, they couldn't get a shot off. I mean, that's, that's how critical that was, and they're still in the football, uh, excuse me, the football <laughs> game, the basketball game. Chris Porter trying to get untracked. He's played 17 minutes, only five points for Demand. Come back to Auburn, second half basketball in a moment. I'm looking for a telecommunications company with real power. Well, sir, Alltel has over 7 million customers in 24 states. Great Scott, man, 7 million? You can't maintain that kind of pace. Well, it's no problem, sir. In fact, now people can bundle different services and save money. But you're pushing it too hard. It's really okay, oh, sir. No, you don't understand. The reactors can't keep up. Sooner or later, they're going to blow. Reactors? <laughs> If this one doesn't get your toe tapping, check your pulse. You may be dead. Here it is, coming to you in living cola. Refreshing Pepsi Cola. From the wonderful folks who put the R in cola. I'll be signing off now, because it's my bedtime. I'll catch you on the flip side. Be there. this job. For nearly 50 years, the Atlantic Coast Conference has excelled both on and off the field. Our corporate partners have helped sustain this tradition of excellence through their financial support of our student-athletes and a variety of community outreach programs. We're proud that our corporate partners have joined with the Atlantic Coast Conference in this important effort. Yeah. spending everything you have. In fact, lease a two-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee Sport for $2.99 a month with zero down and $2.99 due at signing, and you may even have a little change left over. Now get all this at no extra charge. Jeep, official vehicles of the Carolina Panthers. The Auburn Tigers lead by four, getting ready for second half basketball. Should be somewhat interesting if the final two and a half minutes or any indication of what the second 20 minutes will be in this game because, Dan, we saw what we expected to see. We saw some athletes on this floor that were slicing to the hoop, creating some open jump shots. We saw Crawford with a nice 25-foot bomb 
for Florida State. We saw some of that range. We saw Hale with a nice baseline jumper. Pullman with a runner. Robinson with a three. We saw what we expected to see. Hopefully the next 20 will be like that. I thought that some guys coming off the bench were really important in the game. Ron Hale didn't start. He did come off the bench. He's going to start the second half, but he had nine. And Jay Hurd came off the bench for Auburn and had seven in the first half. So both of those players, real important coming off the bench. Old Coach Robinson, moments ago, he might have two of the best subs tonight in the country, Simmons and Hale. Simmons on the bench to start the second half. Auburn starts the second half in the man-to-man -man defense. And there's Arrington trying to slip by Pullman again. Enjai did a real nice job to help out. Over the backboard. Anderson shot rebounded by McGadney. Ahead to Enjai. That's a good catch. Boy, Porter just couldn't handle that pass. That was a real good idea. Hale. Nice finish. You know, guys who are 6'9 and can run like that generally have a future in basketball. Reminds me a little bit of Steve Smith. Now the Portland Trailblazers. Here's Porter. He really had a tough first half offensively, only five points. But Coleman suddenly starts to heat up. Coleman knocks down the 16-footer. Auburn forced 17 turnovers in the first half. They'd really like to get some turnovers early in the second half and get a spurt here. Gadney on Hale. Hale is foul. A step to the free throw line. Hale has been very, very aggressive. He does not appear to be bothered by that knee problem. And I guess he's adjusted to playing with that mask to protect his nose. But McGadney just doesn't do a good job moving his feet, and nobody gets over there in time to help out. McGadney was playing Hale to go to the right, and Hale showed you that he can go to his left pretty well. Hale knocks down the free throw, came in as a 72% foul shooter. He is perfect today, 6 of 6 from the line. From the floor. He's the only guy from Florida State who's been to the line today. Been there seven times. Made them all. He's got 13 points, four rebounds. Now Florida State drops back into the zone defense. Bowman had a, a good look at it. No now, to it. Damis Anderson at 6'7 was standing right there in front of him. I don't think he'd have gotten it off. Skies over Anderson. Then John, the offensive board. Shot is blocked. They're going to call Gerald Boudreaux on the near side, called jump ball. But the official underneath the basket has the call on that particular play. This is a pretty good shot. It's over a seven foot tall guy, but Njai comes across with the rebound and gets the foul call. Good battle on the boards by Auburn, and they have been pretty successful on the board. Seven offensive rebounds in the first half. The problem for the Tigers, they didn't convert very many of those. Injai had a career night early this season against Arkansas Pine Bluff. They went for 21 points and 18 rebounds. Once again, only his fifth year of uh, organized basketball. Not bad. I think they're going to get Porter. I will give Mamadou Njai. Uh, they will give him another opportunity, but lane violation. I will say this. Mamadou has the flashiest shoes on the floor today. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly has more color than anybody else's shoes. Gave him the free beanie. Hits the bottom of the net with it. Now Mamadou with three points. Oh, what a nice job by Njai. He's not going to be able to keep the ball, but the last guy on the court that you would expect to be able to almost get a steal from Ron Hill is Njai. You talk about a seven-foot guy with good, quick feet. Watch as he gets to the baseline and cuts off Ron Hale. That is an outstanding play. Just not able to come up with the steal. Pete Newell of the Pete Newell Big Camp, Big Man Camp fame says his footwork was most impressive at the Big Man Camp this summer. 
And the ball knocked out of bounds. You know, Chris Porter, whenever there's penetration by one of the Florida State players, Porter leaves his man and goes to help. He's really playing a bit of a gambling style on defense. And if Porter's guarding you, you've got to recognize that and go find an open spot, make him pay for leaving you. Hale off the front of the iron. Crawford gets the offensive board. Underneath. Oh, he, he put the ball up against the bottom of the board. And it looks as though Davis Anderson might have hit his hand as he went up on the bottom of that backboard as well. That was a strange sequence. Really a strange sequence. Then Auburn kicks the ball out of bounds. Adrian Crawford gets inside a really nice pass, but he's underneath the basket and smacks it off the bottom of the board. And then Pullman, you know, they tell you, Dave, pick up the ball before you start dribbling. And Pullman didn't do that. Anderson throwing an elbow. Well, Enjai is out there putting great pressure on him, smacking it. 15 on the shot clock. Pullman extends the D on Arrington. Over to Crawford it goes. Pullman is working hard on defense. That is a good screen. Nice look, Arrington to Anderson, and it goes down. That's exactly what we're talking about. Chris Porter switched on that screen, and Davis Anderson went right to the basket, made Porter pay that time for attempting the double team. It's a one-point game. Auburn with the lead. Robinson stutter steps, swatted out of there by David Anderson. Let's go back to that FSU bucket you're talking about. Porter comes around trying to make the steal, and Pullman just simply doesn't get back quickly enough to Damus Anderson, the old screen and roll. And Damus Anderson now going to go out of the game. Damus Anderson with seven points. Takes a break. And trainer Sam Lund immediately comes over and is looking at his hand. Hinchai with a hook. Uh, that was a pretty quick step around Anderson. Unfortunately, when you get into the blue there, you're out of bounds. You can't go across that white line. They got it lost in the color of his shoes. Catches the ball and makes a good quick turn to the basket, but just dribbles it out of bounds. Njai, 7 foot, 245. And I think that's a place where they can go productively. Njai really is quicker and more mobile in there against David Anderson, and they might want to try to put the ball in his hands a couple of times. High arcing three by Crawford, misses. Fishback has Robinson to his right, but decides that he has damage straight up, and he knocks it home. And that's a two-point shot. Cliff Ellis over there signaling the three, but the officials aren't buying it. Three-point Auburn lead, 37-34. You get those long rebounds, sometimes you can translate into transition opportunities. Simmons backs in. Oh, Njai got that one. That's really good help. Rock Robinson kicks it out, Pullman's three. Off the mark, Hale had his hands on it. And it's last touch by, it looks Simmons may have been the last one to All touch it. The number 11, Ridley Sharp. Time out on the floor with 15 minutes. Fishback checks seconds. into the game and makes his presence felt. He's got good range on the shot. And he displays it here. The Auburn Tigers lead it by three. Okay, now watch as I explain the new money manager account. Now, these are our investment beans. They're active beans. Caffeinated. Mm. Yeah. These are our checking account beans, which just kind of sit there. But the money manager account keeps more of our beans over here. Perking. Perking. And then brings them back only when needed to cover a check, which could mean... Higher overall bean return? Right. Could you make some more coffee? A nice demonstration. I'm looking for a telecommunications company with real power. Well, sir, Alltel has over 7 million customers in 24 states. Great Scott, man, 7 million? You can't maintain that kind of pace. Well, it's no problem, sir. In fact, now people can bundle different services and save money. But you're pushing it too hard. It's really okay, oh, sir. No, you don't understand. The reactors can't keep up. Sooner or later, they're going to blow. Reactors? <laughs>
exception release on a Z3 Roadster. This is Fox Sports Net. We've got a good one in Auburn. The Tigers over the Seminoles by three. 15.44 to go in the basketball game. Folks, don't forget, you can get all the latest, most up-to-date information on the Atlantic Coast Conference with ACC Live tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on Fox Sports Net. 7 o'clock Eastern, ACC Live. You got to spend some time in the ACC. One Cliff Ellis, former coach of the Clemson Tigers, celebrating his 54th birthday today. One of the really nice guys in this sport, and we talked about how he's got it going here at Auburn. Well, he got it going at South Alabama, and he got it going at Clemson. Cliff Ellis has just had success wherever he has been, an outstanding basketball coach. Dish back, pump fakes, or excuse me, Doc Robinson. Pump fakes, can't get it to go down. Fish back with the rebound. And Porter telling Sharp to slow down a little bit. Porter with the tip there, just not quite able to get it to go. Porter. <laughs> Follow-up by Fishback is good. Boy, and Auburn keeps hammering the offensive boards. About four or five opportunities that time. Ford finally goes in. That's a nice job by Arrington to get out of the trap. An important offensive possession, I think, for Florida State. That ball, I think, went off Arrington. I was just about to say, Auburn looks like they're getting a little spurt together here. Florida State really needed to get a shot at the basket, but unfortunately, they turn it over. We talked about Porter and his gambling. Here he's guarding Justin Mott, steps out, switches the screen, and knocks it off the feet of Delvon Arrington. Looking for Porter inside. And pushing it back by Oliver Simmons. Sometimes going back to Porter playing defensive, Dan, sometimes will Cliff Ellis put him on a man who maybe not is an offensive player so that he can take more chances? Well, I don't think there's any question about that. Porter is a guy that you, with his athleticism and his instincts for basketball, you like to get him wandering around trying to disrupt the other team's offense. He can certainly do that. Fish back, top of the key. Sharp. Lots of time on the shot clock. 20 seconds. Sharp. I think they're trying to get it inside to either Njai, and they just missed him in there. Njai was all alone, and Sharp dribbling the ball a little too much. Now there's six on the shot clock. Robinson will have to create something. Takes it in, hangs in the air, off the mark, and a foul on Chris Porter. Not a solid offensive sequence for Auburn. Not a good offensive sequence for Auburn, and you talk about guys inside and how, well, you know, how come he can't get open inside at seven feet tall? Well, Njai was wide open, but Sharp didn't pass him the ball. Sharp was spending too much time dribbling and not enough time looking inside for the big guy, and the result is that they had an opportunity to stretch out the lead, and they didn't take advantage. Pressure by Auburn. Timeout taken by Florida State and Adrian Crawford. Auburn bait you to inbound it in that corner. That's exactly what happened. And Auburn, they had such great success last year. They sort of were operating with the element of surprise, but no element of surprise this year. And Cliff Ellis knows that, and he talked about it when we talked to him a little earlier. To come out of nowhere and do that, that's always the great ride. Now, that ride and you get in the automobile, it's expected. Now expectations change. And we can't change our philosophy and how we got there. It's important to keep focus on how we got there and continue to do those things. And those little things that he's talking about, certainly one of them is playing solid defense. Well, they have been very solid defensively, forcing turnovers, and now they force two consecutive timeouts by Florida State, and he only got five of them, and Steve Robinson just shaking his head over there. Guys, he's going to tell his troops it's hard enough when we get the ball inbounds. We've got to at least be able to get it in there. Well, defensively, Auburn is giving up just 56 and a half points this year. Last year, they gave up 61 points a game. The difference is Auburn scored 81 a game a year ago. They're only scoring 72 this year. They have played a couple of pretty good defensive teams. UAB is a solid defensive team, and Stanford is one of the country's outstanding defensive teams. But this is not a 
understand that Auburn doesn't have every single piece back from last year. And they were a team, whenever you have a magical run like that, coming from nowhere and achieving what they did, a lot of it has to do with chemistry and character. And when you take a piece, a couple of pieces out of that puzzle, it's hard to get that back. That doesn't mean this team won't do it, but it's just early in the season. You're not going to be playing your best basketball in November and December. This team is trying to figure out how they're going to mesh together. And a perfect example is Chris Porter. He spent so much time practicing his outside shot. Well, he's going to want to use that outside shot. Maybe that's not always the best play for him. He's going to have to figure out when he should and when he doesn't. Did that hit the rim? Looked like it caught the bottom of the rim and then a foul underneath. Crawford had to launch it. Crawford launched it, but they're going to get a foul, and I think Crawford's going to get the three-point. Crawford's going up to shoot the ball. They're going to call a foul. Pullman that was Pullman. Up. Boy, that is not a good foul with the shot clock running out. Foul the three-point shooter. Wow. Crawford stepped to the free throw line. It's only one of two on the year. High arching shot off the back of the iron. And that is the first player other than Ron Hale to be at the free throw line. since he was fouled in the act of shooting the three-point shot, he's going to get another attempt. Crawford averages five and a half points a game, two rebounds. Missed two of three. He has six points in the game. Well, and that was a good look. That's the kind of shot that Auburn was making with great consistency last season, and they haven't made that shot. And there's Porter again, forcing a turnover by jumping out, applying pressure. Crawford, I don't think hit him very hard. I just think that uh, when Porter hit the ground, it was obvious that Crawford had extended the arm. Whether he hit him or not, it was very uh Doesn't matter apparent. how hard the contact occurs. Now, he really does do an act there and flops, but Crawford did extend the arm and did knock him down, and by that contact, gained an advantage, and that's why they called the foul. You put actor among the list of accomplishments for Chris Porter after that. His own defense now for Florida State. Ball the baseline jumper. Good. He hit it over Oliver Simmons. Well, I'll tell you what, he doesn't take long to get his feet set, but once he gets his feet set, he rarely misses. Open a scrappy player with a great shot out of Roswell, Georgia. Simmons with a pick on Pullman. Crawford dumps it underneath and a foul against Auburn. Foul against Fishback on the inside. Fishback is only about six feet five, and Mott is between six eight and six nine, and so that's a tough inside matchup there. Simmons up top. Dixon. I haven't seen Ron Hale in a while as we approach the 12 minute mark. Simmons turns left handed shot, touched in the air by Mamadou Injai, goaltending against Auburn. Fishback that time got trapped down underneath the basket, this time against Oliver Simmons. Out on the perimeter, Fishback has the advantage, but down inside, Simmons doing a nice job getting good position and just taking it up over the smaller man. Four-point Auburn lead. And Florida State trying to turn up the defensive intensity out there. Back to the man-to-man. -man. Sharp. Pullman gives it off to her. Very big lineup on the court for Florida State. Mott the rebound. You figure Auburn would have the advantage in terms of quickness, and they did, getting it down into the lane, but once Hurd got in, all those big bodies couldn't convert the layup. Florida State can cut the lead to 2 or 1 here. Look down low, but he missed his target, Damus Anderson. You've got to be looking for your shot when you have the ball against the smaller man that close to the basket. Sharp misses. Rebound comes out to Florida State. Anderson, six foot seven, pulls it down. Florida State just keeps hanging in and hanging in. They won't go away. Crawford fouled in the act. Will they count the bucket? 
bucket. Yes, they will. And that is what Adrian Crawford has been looking for the last couple of possessions, the opportunity to get the ball down inside against the smaller Pullman. Pullman only about six feet tall. Crawford is almost six feet six, and he's a powerful young man. Just turns in there. Actually, it helped him as Sharp comes and knocks the ball away. It actually gives Crawford an extra lane to the basket. He had lost his dribble, and when Sharp knocked it away, he was able to dribble again. With that lineup that was on the floor moments ago, Crawford, your best option offensively, but he misses the free throw. Now one of four from the free throw line. Two-point game. Ron Hale about to check in for Florida State. Bird pulls up. Three-pointer, short. And that's, a, that's another wide-open look at the basket. And you sense a little bit of frustration on the part of the Tigers right now. They keep missing shots that they've made last year, that they've been making in practice, and so they try to turn up the defensive intensity and pick up a foul. Cliff Ellis and the Auburn Tigers trying to figure out the Seminoles back in a moment. It's a battle for bragging rights. Jason Collier and the Ramblin' Wreck clash with bitter rival Georgia. Georgia Tech, Georgia, Wednesday at 7.30 on Fox Sports Net. Hi, I'm Jim Rome. Monday on The Last Word, three-time All-Star forward Glenn Rice of the Los Angeles Lakers will be my guest. We'll discuss the Lakers' hot start, what it's like to play for the Zen master, Phil Jackson, and the return of Kobe Bryant. Monday at 6.30 and midnight right here on Fox Sports Net. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Auburn leads Florida State 41 to 39 in this ACC SEC matchup. And we've got more of the ACC and the SEC coming your way on Wednesday night. Georgia Tech and Georgia should be a good one. Bobby Cremins takes on Jim Herrick's Georgia Bulldogs. This game, a little extra spice in it this year. You can bet the Georgia fans haven't forgotten and will not soon forget what happened in Atlanta at the Georgia Tech Georgia football game with the fumble with three seconds to go in that football game or the non-fumble, however you want to term it. But Dave, the fans will certainly be excited about that, but I don't know that the basketball players pay all that much attention to that ball that's pointy on right. both ends and doesn't bounce up when you throw it down. They will, uh, they will hear a little bit about it, though, for those two hours of that game. They're trying to turn up the defensive pressure. Very small lineup in the game for Auburn right now. The tallest guy out there is Porter at 6'7", and then Fishback at 6'5", and you get progressively smaller from there. Simmons. Again, you would figure possibly an advantage in quickness for Auburn, except in this matchup right here. There's six on the shot clock. Anderson kicks it out to Simmons. There's two on the shot clock. He's going to have to shoot. They're not going to get it off. And Steve Robinson is telling Damus Anderson, hey, you get it that late in the shot clock, you've got to know you have to shoot that ball. Once he passed it back out to Simmons, Simmons not a three-point shooter, and he had the ball out beyond the arc with only two seconds left. Jay Hurd off the mark. I, I think Damus Anderson may have gotten a hand on that, and Ron Hale steps out of bounds. Hale had his hands on the basketball. Fishback scrapping down underneath the basket forced Hale to step out of bounds. Njai and Sharp back on the floor. Hurd and Pullman take a seat. As we have seen for a great portion of this game, 
battle underneath, and clearly he stepped out of bounds. Referee right on top of it down there. Perhaps that's the reason Auburn's in there, or Florida State's in this game with Auburn. The rebounding story is Auburn 26, Florida State 25. Porter, 17-footer off the back of the iron, make the rebounding game even, 26 apiece. Remember, Auburn averages plus eight in that department. And Auburn had a lot early. So Florida State has done a much better job on the boards after about the first five or six minutes of the game. Arrington picks it out. Anderson. That three is good. Damus Anderson is a guy that you simply can't give that much time. If he's allowed to line up that three-point shot, he shoots it very, very well. Florida State leads for the first time since it was four to three. Oh, what a play by Enjai. And I'll tell you what, he has shown that he can take it to the basket against David Anderson. He ought to do more of that. Seven feet, 245 with a nice dipsy do reverse. So it was his footwork, quickness out on the perimeter that got him there. Man-to-man -man defense for Auburn. Five on the shot clock. Long three off the mark. Robinson has Sharp, gives it to him. Sharp's left-handed layup. Good. Boy, that's that's your nightmare if you're the coach. You run the shot clock all the way down, miss the long three-point shot, and the other guys run out on you. Four straight points for Auburn. Here's Hale. Boy, great hustle by Doc Robinson to get back and prevent Hale from getting close to the basket. Simmons, his three is good. You know, I just said that he's not a three-point shooter, so that shows you how much I know. That was only his second of the season. He's perfect. He's two of two. So are we, do you think we're in another spurt here, Dave, where the offense is going to come back? Simmons blocks Maybe the not. shot. Well, these teams have shown they have that kind of capability. Things have heated up here at Beard Eves Memorial Coliseum in Auburn. Florida State giving the seventh-ranked team all they want. Mamadou Njai showing some skill as well. If you want your car to pass this daily test, come to a place with a track record of great service low prices, and nationwide warranties. Come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. You'll always get a lot at Meineke, like a nationwide warranty on the Meineke muffler that's right for you. When it comes to customer satisfaction, come to Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. It's impossible to think about additives and preservatives in a place like this. Gold Kissed Farms Chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm. Because it is. While our owners aren't into flashy limos and vanity plates, they do enjoy having their name on the door. Farmer-owned Gold Kissed Farms Chicken. Tastes fresh from the farm. Because it is. It's happening again. Where's it centered? I got it. It's centered on Elwood Drive. Go, go, go! Back. All the buildings back. 2.7. Yeah. 2.9. Oh, I'm feeling it. Go, move it. Go, go, go. Yeah! Oh! I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. Yeah! Geico Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Seminoles riding some confidence after beating Northwestern in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Tied up with Auburn, 45 apiece, 7.42 to go in the second half. Don't forget, folks, for the latest information, player profiles, and anything you really didn't need to know about the SEC, tune into SEC TV Weekly, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Coming up on next Saturday's show, it's our men's basketball special, and Cliff Ellis will travel to our studios in Atlanta and join us as we take a look at all 12 schools in the Southeastern Conference. Porter has kind of had a frustrating day offensively. Dumps it down to Fishback. His shot's blocked. Arrington comes away with it. 
Florida State in the man-to-man, -man and Porter playing on the outside. Maybe it'd be better to reverse that with Fish back on the outside, throwing it into Porter. There's Crawford. He's got that height advantage against Pullman. Air ball, and Jai comes away with it. Doc Robinson pushes it. Four on three. Pulls up from the free throw line. Too strong. Boy, that's frustrating for a player. Arrington, lightning quick. Blocked by Njai. The Tigers' first block of the game. That was great hustle down the court by Njai. He's shown us that he can rebound the ball. He made that great play that we showed you as we were going away to break, beating his man to the baseline. And here he just runs the court, gets the block shot, and then stays with it, and actually is the guy that ties it up. Fortunate for Auburn that he didn't land on the out-of-bounds line. But on the alternating possession, the Tigers get the ball. Florida State drops back into the zone. Enjai's ninth block this year. Auburn's all-time block shot leader with 184 in his career. The alley-oop to Porter! Well, that's one way to get him involved. the glass he answers as Porter came over and tried to double up but again Arrington's quickness beating Pullman out on the perimeter man-to-man -man defense for Florida State that's a good tip out by David Anderson now Florida State running blocked couldn't see who got that Injai ahead of the field, but Anderson knocks it out. Was that Hurd who blocked that I shot? I believe that was Hurd. Let's go back to the alley-oop. This has happened uh, more than one time in this building, I would say. Robinson Mom Mamadou Njai does a great job with a screen against David Anderson, and when you screen the seven-foot guy, nobody's back there to prevent that lob to Porter. Porter takes a seat with seven points, just two of ten from the floor, Dan. Frustrating day for him. He has not really been able to get the ball on the break, and he hasn't really been able to get the ball on the inside. Again, they miss Njai. And Njai screws up his face in a little frustration. He was wide open on the inside. And he has shown that he can beat David Anderson. McGadney. Shot clock. The left hander, no good. Loose basketball. McGadney comes the down shot with clock it. violation. The never. ball never hit the rim. Excellent call by our officials. Steve Robinson won't necessarily agree. He's a little. Oh no, Steve Robinson completely agrees. Excuse he me. gets the ball. <laughs> now here's Arrington pushing it again. Is the shot. Good defense by guess who? Mamadou Njai. And that's a big three. That is a big, big basket. You know, we've had a lot of back and forth, Dave, but very little scoring. Hey, oh. I think there's a foul call. And check called against Hurd. Now, this is a confident player, and you ought to be confident if you're a senior who's had the kind of career that he has. He missed, he has missed about three or four of those shots coming down, stopping on the break, but buries a big one when his team needs it. Robinson with 14 points to lead all Auburn players. Auburn will call a timeout. You talked about how key Doc Robinson is to this team. Porter not having a great night. Doc Robinson knows he has to step it up offensively, and he's done so. And it hasn't really, the thing about the Auburn struggles from the field, only 19 of 60, Dave, is they really haven't forced that many shots. They've gotten, I think, the kinds of shots that they want to get, particularly on the break in the second half. They have missed some wide open opportunities in transition that you would think that they would normally make. Well, we talked about it early on, Coach Harris from Auburn. You know, we asked, are you disappointed with your shooting percentage? 29 from behind the arc, 38% overall. He says, no, we've had good shots all season, eventually they'll begin to fall. 
31% for Auburn today from the field, 48% for FSU. How about this, 35 field goal attempts for Florida State today, 60 field goal attempts for Auburn. And uh, it's only a three-point basketball game. Hale has a chance to make it even closer. Really a great effort by Florida State. They have been given a number of different opportunities where they could have sort of folded up the tents and gone home, and they really have not. They have continued to battle. That was apparent when they turned it over 13 times in the first seven minutes of this game. Porter touched it when it was inside the cylinder. And Counts the free count. throw. Ron Hale now with 14. Make that 15. He's 9 of 9 from the free throw line. Ugly numbers if you're an Auburn fan. One point, Auburn lead. On the plus side for Auburn, though, they get a lot of shots. And another big shot by Robinson. Robinson with 16, the turnover. And that has been the big play. 25 turnovers now for Florida State. They just keep coming at you. Fishback guarded by Hale. Just over four minutes to go in the game. Fishback, wide open jumper, off the mark. That'll be all for basketball. Porter on his way out of bounds, calls timeout. And Porter really set that play up by setting a screen out on the top for Fishback. As Fishback went off the screen for the shot, Porter just attacks the basket, which is why he was in position. Now, Porter has set the screen. Watch him come flying into the picture. There he is, and as he comes down, jumps up in the air, gets the timeout call. Doc Robinson, we talked before the game about what a key player he had to be for Auburn. Gives the fake, gets Arrington flying by, and then gets himself set. And even though Ron Hale's there, he makes the basket. 16 points for Doc, five assists. He averages over seven, nearly eight assists per game, which is second best in the league in the early part of this season. Part of the problem for Doc Robinson today with his assist total is the ball hasn't been going in the basket, so he's been making some good passes, but you only get an assist if your guys convert. <laughs> Coleman. He's struggling from the field. Fishback rips down the rebound. Under four to go. Harrington really trying hard to keep the ball away from Robinson. Njai out high on Anderson. Here's Doc Robinson. Robinson's pull up three. No good. Rebound to Anderson. And that's one of those plays if you're Chris Cliff Ellis, you just shake your head because on the roll, Porter was all alone for the offensive rebound if the ball had rebounded in the opposite direction. A swipe. Looks like a foul going to be called. He gets Fishback. Fishback picks up his third personal. Slap of the skin through the lane. Anderson steps to the free throw line. 64% foul shooter. Knocks it home. One of the things with your defense, if you are you have the lead in the game, and it doesn't really matter how big your lead is, but if you've got the lead, you don't want to be putting the opposition on the free throw line. That was not a good foul by Fishback. Season Florida State just a 58% free throw shooting team today. It's 80%. One of the reasons they only trail by one. You guys are in here again. I can't believe this. You're always in here nursing your injuries. I have never seen such a group of cream pop in my life. This is football. I need guys that can play. Man, I thought he'd never leave. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Hot dog, anyone? If you believe that...
that life holds no guarantees, then you haven't been to Great Clips. Because at Great Clips, the good people who cut your hair are exceptionally wise in the ways of style. They receive ongoing postgraduate instruction at the Great Clips Advanced Training Centers. It's where they learn all the hippest styles, the freshest cuts, the coolest news. Which means every time you walk out our door, you will love your haircut. And that's a guarantee. Great Clips. Guaranteed satisfaction. Guaranteed style. The Atlantic Coast Conference. A tradition since 1953. And Fox Sports Net has it covered from the first snap to the final buzzer on ACC Live. Get the most comprehensive coverage of ACC football and basketball anywhere with highlights from around the league and in-depth analysis. From the courts to the fields, ACC Live has it all. ACC Live, Mondays at 7 on Fox Sports Net. We're back at Auburn, one-point game. You see the Hawaiian shirts over there, two players that will contribute. One in the next Auburn game, David Hamilton in the green Hawaiian shirt. Their thing. Hawaiian shirts, they look like they got them. They took down Aunt <laughs> Millie's curtains. The other guy next to him is a fellow ACC fans will remember, Adam Harrington, transferred in from NC State with the blue Hawaiian shirt. He lit up Duke last year for 26 at 22 against FSU. That is a huge addition to the split Palace team that they will see next season. That'll be next season. Hamilton, of course, is going to be back, as you mentioned, earlier than that. Next time out for Auburn, they'll have Hamilton really help them to have another big body inside. We've got a one-point game just over three minutes. Actually, we're at the three-minute mark. Robinson. Zone defense for Florida State. They have done a nice job switching between the zone and the man-to-man -to -man today. And here's the shot clock running down again. Inside of 10. Fish back finds Pullman. Quick release. In and out. Pullman on the day. Now 4 of 12 and a foul against Florida State. We'll keep it here. And Pullman just shaking his head. That is the shot that you want. You move the ball around the zone and Pullman wide open. And the ball goes halfway down and comes back out. This is a really nice pass. Pullman gets the shot off before Anderson can get there. And there is Chris Porter doing one of the things that he does very, very well, just attacking the boards. And the NJ was open again. And you may have heard the crowd ooh with that because they didn't throw him the ball. Robinson, bounce pass underneath to Porter. He spins in the lane, it's fouled, it won't go down. And that's something that we have not seen very much of today. Porter posting up deep inside the lane. And this is a really, really good play by Robinson. Porter does a nice job picking up that ball, but then powering it to the basket. The only thing that didn't go well for Auburn on that play was that Porter didn't make the shot. Now he's got the opportunity from the line. Porter on the season. 63%. Today, he's now three of five. Substitution, here comes Arrington for the final 226. They'll go a little smaller as Simmons heads to the bench. Well, they want a ball handler in there, and until Arrington gets back in, the only real ball handler they have is Crawford. Oh, I missed them both. Oh, my. One-point game. Njai steps on the baseline. It's Florida State basketball. From a coaching standpoint, there really isn't much more you can do. Cliff Ellis, the offense that they're running is getting them shots that they ought to be able to make. And then when you get a guy posted up down inside, goes to the free throw line, there's just very little you can do about that. It's got to be frustrating. Auburn 8 of 12 from the line today. Anderson over to Arrington. Down low, Crawford off his knee. It'll be Auburn basketball. Nice idea by Florida State trying to post Crawford up on the inside, but that was a very difficult pass to handle. Guy coming through the lane, you throw the ball down at his knees. Pullman in pretty good position, I think, bothered that pass, and Adrian Crawford a little disgusted with himself. Florida State back into man-to-man. Pullman, -man. good first step. Nowhere to go on the bigger Crawford, however. Extended defense. Pullman pulls up. The iron. Good rebound and block out by David Anderson. That was maybe a little bit of a force by Pullman. That's not the shot that he's known for. That jumper under pressure off the dribble. Arrington gives it up to David Anderson. Back to Arrington. Under a minute and a half. There's Crawford. Crawford trying to work his way down inside. 
Porter nearly had the steal. Harrington, Porter does have the steal. He's got to take this one himself. Finger roll up and good. A block against the Seminoles. And a big bucket from you know who. We have talked all game long about how he has left his man and tried to double team. And that time, he, that Florida State tried to take advantage of it. Watch Arrington recognizing that Porter's sneaking around, get, tries to get it to Damus Anderson. But Porter is there and wisely elects to not pass the ball to take it all the way himself. That is a tremendous defensive play and then great execution on the offensive end. Chris Porter hangs in the air just over the fingertips of Ron Hale. And Chris Porter knows that was a big bucket with 70 seconds left in this game. A chance to make this a four-point basketball game if he can make the free throw. But he has struggled there today. Three of six from the line. But he just executed the play that he's been making the entire game. You know, if you go off the screen, he's going to come and switch and double team. And then he did a great job rotating back to his man. Florida State just didn't find Damus Anderson soon enough. He's just so quick. Great hands. Box out! They call him Demand around here. Doc and do and Demand. They make up three D. They introduce him as demand. Chris Porter to the free throw line. In and out. Porter has nine points. It's still a three-point game as we approach. One minute to go from Beard East Memorial Coliseum in Auburn, Alabama. Anderson off the mark. Gets his own rebound, kept alive by Simmons. Arrington. Porter was sneaking out, trying to get the basket. Timeout taken by Steve Robinson. 28 seconds on the shot clock. 47-7 to go in the basketball game. It was a good look by Anderson. It really was. And again, Porter had left Anderson, was trying to help out. There was a screen on the inside, and Davis Anderson was wide open. As Porter reacted back and realized he wasn't going to get there, he started down the court. So when the shot missed, Anderson was able to get the rebound. Well, here you go. You got a guy like Ron Hale on your club who has 15 points to lead your team. Got off to a good start. Finished the first half well the second half well, but he's been kept in check. Look at our game summary. Order, nine points, five boards, but struggle from the floor. Robertson's won the battle of the point guards. Yes, he has. Arrington with those 10 turnovers, but none of that means anything right now. If you're Florida State, I think you need to try to get a shot before you get the 35 seconds involved. You want to get a shot before the clock goes to 35. That means he'll get the ball back again. Auburn has missed more shots than Florida State has taken today. Arrington lost the handle, Porter with a steal. 30 seconds to go, a foul. Just lost the handle. I think Florida State was trying to get the quick shot if they could get a good one, but good defense by Auburn. And then when Florida State was forced to step out, and set the offense up. The ball just bounces off Arrington. He just loses the handle. That's 11 turnovers. Now, no hands or anything in there. He just lost it as he was trying to bring it up. Boy, that is a tough break for Florida State, and they really don't have any choice now but to foul, and they fouled the wrong guy. 28 turnovers for Florida State today. They had 29 against Florida, but a miss at the free throw line. And they still have a chance. Boy, you figure Doc Robinson on the line. The game's over. Simmons up high. Fish back, guarding Hale. Crawford with the three. Got it! 11.6 seconds left. Doc Robinson brings it up. Five, four. Has it struck? who just missed the front end of the one-and-one one, now has a chance 
But Florida State, Adrian Crawford, this is a deep three-point basket. You simply cannot allow that young man to get that shot off in that situation. And here Robinson drives to the basket, and Arrington really has no choice, reaches in. He thinks he got all ball. Missed the first with 2.3 seconds to go. And now you've missed two consecutive free throws. This is pressure here. Robinson, four of six from the free throw line. Makes the second one point game. Arrington loses it, Porter. And Auburn holds off a scrappy bunch from Tallahassee. 55 to 54 on a Doc Robinson free throw with 2.3 seconds to go in the game. It wasn't pretty, but Cliff Ellis and the Auburn Tigers will take the victory. And it's a victory that they earned. They played very, very hard. An excellent defensive effort by Auburn, forcing that last turnover there was 29 turnovers by Florida State. Auburn shot the ball very poorly, only 21 of 67. But Cliff Ellis's troops and their defensive effort, that's what enables them to pull it out. Auburn put up 30 more shots than Florida State did in this basketball game. But Cliff Ellis picks up career number 100 as the head coach of the Auburn Tigers on his 54th birthday against his alma mater. We will come back half more from Auburn. Stay with us.